Hey, now we are back and we are at the C's. There are like 27 C's in the Baseball Hall of Fame, maybe more, but around that number. That's a lot. So I don't know when we're going to finish it, but I know we're going to start it today. So, and we're going to start with Roy Campanella. This video is going to be a little long because essentially there are two separate autographs of Roy Campanella, obviously pre accident and post accident. Uh, any baseball fan pretty much knows that Roy Campanella was in a horrific accident in 1958. Uh, he was just coming home from learning that the Dodgers were moving to LA. It's just a horrible coincidence. And he was in a bad car accident. He was not, a, he lost all basically feeling from the neck down. Uh, he was able to get, regain some of that back later, and we'll get to that a little bit. So, before we talk about the post accident Roy Campanella, let's start with the pre accident Roy Campanella autograph. So, I'm going to go in the PSA database. Uh, I'm going to talk about the pre accident. We're not going to look at the post accident, we'll get back to those. And again, there's a lot to take in here, especially with the post accident. So, uh, so let's start. So, again, this is a very early, this is probably one of the earliest Roy Campanella autographs you're going to see. Uh, this is on the PSA database. Somehow, a bunch of the autographs out of the Puerto Rican League during this time in the Negro Leagues came out. And again, Campanella, I mean, like you're, we're talking Gibson, again, Rick Brown. A lot of very important autographs came out of here. And this is, you can see Roy Campanella here. And what's typical with the Roy Campanella with this one, a couple of things you want to look at. He, with the two stroke R's you can see right here down and then around. Uh, this is a very nice, very young Roy Campanella autograph. As we're going to see in a moment, his autograph became leading more to the right and more compact. It had a really nice flow. Uh, let's just keep going here again. Okay. Here again is another very early 1941 autograph. Again, this is pre his 1948 debut. I doubt very many people were, asking for his autograph while he was in the Negro Leagues, even though he was a great Negro League player. So again, okay, now we're getting to a more typical Roy Campanella autograph. And what you want to look for, again, is the two-stroke now becomes a one-stroke. He still, for the most part, you should be seeing a break between the R and the O and the C and the A. Unfortunately, it's not consistent always, but it's, I would say, 75, 80% of the time. But what's more important is you're going to see his autograph now shifting more to the right. And as he got even more, uh, again, you can see right here, this is a little bit further away. But again, more to the right, break one stroke R. But again, there's a break between the R and the O. And then, believe it or not, there is a break between the C and the A. So we're going to get in. Okay, here again, really nice autograph, dated. He's on the Dodgers now. You can see right now. It's a pretty much a single line item where he was pretty good about signing his autograph that way. But again, it's a really tough autograph autograph to replicate. Uh, we'll talk about the one exemption to that. But again, one stroke R, break between the O and the C. And again, very leaning towards the right. Uh, beautiful autograph right here. Same thing right here, leans towards the right. One stroke, you see the breaks. Again, now this is what's more common. He was signing in the autographs in the 50s. Uh, pre, again, pre, not pre-stroke. I keep saying pre-stroke. I didn't see what Buck Leonard. Pre-accident is the fact that he signs more now on an upward to the right angle. You can see it goes up and to the right. And that is much more common. That's really one. If you're buying a Roy Campanella autograph, or if I were buying one, this is what I would be looking for. Again, to the right. Breaks between the R, breaks between the C, slant to the right, and an upward right angle. And again, I like me, I like dated. Oh, this is a beautiful autograph. Even you can see right here, it goes up and to the right. So again, keep going. Uh, again, very much to the right slanted. I love these autographs. I wish I owned a letter like this. Uh, again, another contract, another contract. But again, these are Dodger contracts now, 1958. This is one of the last autographs you probably signed, to be honest. Pre-stroke, typical Roy Campanella autograph. Break here, break here, a nice slant to the right. Let's keep going here. We're gonna again. We're gonna skip the stroke up. Post, sorry, post accident autographs. But again, you can see it goes up and to the right. Breaks here, very slanted. One thing you want to look for, and we'll get to why in a second, is there's not much spacing between this upper C. 
right there. And again, and usually the A comes down. It doesn't loop back up. I wish all Campanella pre-accident signatures didn't loop back up. Some did. And, I mean, we're going to show why in a second here. Uh, again, this looks like an earlier autograph because there's no breaks between the R and the C. But, again, it's still a nice right slant going up. So, I mean, hopefully you're starting to get the feel. It's impossible to get the feel until you really start staring at these for quite some time. Uh, Ron, obviously, he stopped signing in 1958. There should be zero hesitation in the pre-accident signature for obvious reasons. I think he was 37 at the time of the accident so after he got in his accident his wife started taking over and this is a typical roxy campanella autograph and you can see right here i mean some of her autographs do slip through from time to time which it's common with her number one is there's a much bigger loop in the c right here you can see a lot more space same thing with the r again we'll go back and forth here the r is pretty good the c though you can see there should be very little space and for some reason fortunately for her she always looped her a's up so when you're looking at a roy campanella autograph you got to be really careful because she non-maliciously maliciously signed a lot of his mail post accident so speaking of the accident i want to take real quickly and watch this video this is Roy Campanella signing an autograph. Sorry, not signing up, but writing post accident. So we can watch this real quickly. Mind is so full of thoughts and memories as I sit in my wheelchair, about to write the story of my life. A life that has been so wonderful, so eventful, so exciting. A life that was almost taken away from me one winter's night in 1958. Now, as I look back on my years in baseball, so, again, that was just a quick example of Roy Campanella trying to write post-accident. Now, this is a very famous picture here. So, when the Dodgers moved to L.A., they had a, a game at the Coliseum honoring Roy Campanella. They had over 100,000 people in attendance. For about 50 years, it was the largest attended baseball game ever, even though it was an exhibition game against the Yankees. Uh, interesting side note, the person pushing Ray Campanella, Ray Campanella's in the wheelchair, obviously, is Hall of Famer Biz Mackey. A uh, very, very tough autograph. But that's him right there, Biz Mackey, uh, pushing Ray Campanella. So let's talk about oh, one more. I'll show you my autograph. So this is my autograph currently. Someone not Roy Campanella wrote here, Dodgers 1948. So obviously this is when he came up, the year he came up with the Dodgers. Again, I really like this one. It's got nice upper right. It is, it's on my Hall of Fame wall up there somewhere. Again, you can see the nice break between the C and the R. The A comes down. There's not a lot of space there. It's got a full JSA letter for whatever that means. So, But the problem is once he got in his accident, for better or worse, Roy kept signing autographs. And, I mean, that's great that he met the demand. <clears throat> and I have Beckett's with him. I'm going to get some post strokes. I have Beckett's where he does shows. So now the problem is, like you saw, I mean, people argue whether or not it's a real autograph. The problem is he couldn't, he, sorry, he could only sign flat items, as again, you saw in that video. And his autograph really was all over the place. So again, you can see this is obviously a post accident autograph, but again, he loops it. It's, there's the C looks good. It's, it's I don't know how these authenticator, authenticators are able to autograph that. I mean, the post accident this versus post accident this. I mean, I suppose they're both to be good. This is more straight line parallels, which you would expect to see because of the writing device he was used. This is actually a little more loopy. I don't even know. But again, I mean, I'm not saying PSA is right or wrong. I just be very weary buying any post-stroke signature. But if I were to buy a post-stroke signature, and I have bought, again, I keep saying post-stroke, I'm sorry, post-accident signature. I'm pressing any more in here. So, yeah, here's an, this is a pretty common image right here of Roy post-accident. You'll see a lot of him are in a crouch position. Yeah, right here. These are probably like the standard two photos you see that he was probably signing when he was doing uh at autograph shows, believe it or not. So uh, this right here, if I, well, I had to buy if I wanted him in my collection. So I had to buy, there was one of only three autographs I really feel comfortable with Campanella post 
accident. I'm trying to get that right. Post accident. The first one are these Salvino figures. Uh, I paid 150 to mine. You can get these for maybe 250. These have like uh, they were witnessed and everything. I think they're good. I like the fact that it should go more up and down instead of loop and side because of the way his uh, machine worked. And these Salvino's figures are out there. They're not terribly rare. And I know these are all good. The second one, and I know for a fact that Bill V. Hall of Autograph, collector, whatever, he signed these cards for front row. There are 2,000 of these cards signed. Rumor is it took him quite a long time to sign it because of obvious reasons. But again, you can see you want the more up down with the post accident signature. You don't want a lot of loops right here. So again, I know these are good. And the final one I remember he did the signing for are right here. And again, this is, can I, nope, I can't do it anymore here. But again, this is a Peluso. Uh, this artist did a lot of Hall of Famers. He did drawings and he would have the Hall of Famers sign their names. And again, you can see right here, which is more common for the Roy Campanella. You can see up, down, up, down. So again, those are the only three that I would buy if I were buying a Campanella autograph. Now, again, this bottom one here is a Coach's Corner special. Way too neat. Apparently, they say he signed some bats. Uh, I find that hard to believe, but I, I don't want to say for sure it's not true. I don't know 100%. But again, he could only sign flat surfaces. Uh, there are a couple of Bill White, and make sure you look for a Bill White autograph baseballs out there. Uh, I remember when this happened, Golden was able to have Campanella sign the baseball. Then we can Google one. You can uh, have Roy Campanello. Let's, let's take a look. Signed baseball. You can see what I was looking at with Golden. So maybe we could find one right here. And the reason why I say Bill White is they had him sign the baseball pre-stitched. So because since he couldn't sign around, he was signed a pre-stitch. You could see right here. They're still really tough. He signed it while they were flat. And as far as I know, all of them were William White baseball. So that's something really to look out for. And another fake, the classic fake, fake is from the brow. And again, any vintage Hall of Fame autograph would know this. So you would see this ball. They're all like 1955 era balls. Again, because they won, he won a World Series. He was very popular. So they all fortunately are the same. Robinson, Campanella, Erskine. If you see him in that order, run from the ball. It is no good. No good, no good, no good. Remember, Robinson, Campanella, Erskine, these are all clubhouse signatures. Uh, everyone on this baseball. And the brow is like considered like the greatest clubhouse signature person ever. So, again, looking at recent sales of Roy Campanella right here. Uh, again, this is a uh, post-stroke sign ball, William White ball. That went for 1860 That's actually a lot of money. It shouldn't be going for that high. But, again, you're going to expect to pay 384 for the same ball. I don't know why. Not the same ball, but the same type of signature. So, again, for a pre-accident Campanella, you expect to pay at least, probably, this is actually a good deal, probably about $1,000, I'm not going to lie. Post-accident is going to be cheaper. You're going to pay $500 to 1000 depending on the medium. But just, again, be so careful with the Campanella. I mean, if it were me, I would invest the money. Yeah, this went for a lot of money, actually. Wow. Oh, I had Robinson on it also on the other side. I would invest the money. Buy a pre-accident Roy Campanella. If you're going to buy a post-accident, buy one of the three I showed you. Uh, this is probably, yeah, wow, this is really one of the longer videos I've done. But it really, it's so important with Campanella. I really think because his autograph was so sloppy post-accident that so many bad autographs have gotten through because – Usually when you sign your name, there's so many unique characteristics you can make out a good from a bad. But unfortunately, post-accident, was uh, I mean, it was great that he was still signing. He's still doing shows and everything. But it was just uh, just every autograph, like a snowflake, was very unique. So very little matching attributes to them. So that's about it. We're going to go to Rod Carew next. Uh Rockaroo, this will be a much shorter video. But, yeah, you know, there was a, there was a, some big controversy with Rockaroo recently, uh, and uh, we'll share about it later. As always, thank you for watching. Please like. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends. I'll try to get to Rockaroo this week. As always, keep collecting.